Hi, this video is about my Dragon Link V3 relay station. The goal for this is to be as short as possible while giving you all the information you need to build yourself one of these and also how to configure it. The reason I built a relay station like this was so that I could sit in a car on a cold day and not suffer from reduced controlling performance. This type of relay would also benefit people that are trying to fly from inside a building or just for those who really want to put the Dragon Link in the optimum position. For those of you flying in an environment where you can park your car in a decent position, then you can fly from inside the car and I have done this in the past. As long as you're not going for extreme range, you should be fine. You could also extend a servo cable from your TX to your Dragon Link transmitter and place it on the roof of your car. I'm not a big fan of this method just because I think it would involve a bit of messing about once you've launched the plane. One of the flight routes I like to take is to go just to the left of this dark patch here, which is actually a hill. I then go behind it, breaking line of sight, and fly really low along a river. So if we head over to where I'm forced to park my car, you'll see why this really isn't a good location for the Dragon Link transmitter. This is already a fairly challenging flight as it is for my control link without sitting behind trees. On other occasions, I like to stand on this peak right here and then fly really nice and low down this field for as far as I can, and also flying through this apple tree farm here behind all of these trees. I just don't fancy my chances having the Dragon Link in the car all the way back here. To build this relay, the only electronics you need is a PDB and a 2.4 GHz receiver with an SBUS output. So these are the actual parts that I used, but I didn't use them for any specific reason other than they were just unused parts I had laying around. I'll put links to them in the video description so you can check them out anyway. The PDB I'm using is a Matec 5-in-1, and really the only thing you need to look out for when choosing one is that it has a voltage regulator suitable for your receiver, which would usually be 5 volt. This one also has a handy low voltage buzzer built into it, and it's pretty cheap at around three or four dollars. The receiver I'm using is a FreeSky R XSR. As I mentioned earlier, the important thing when choosing a receiver is that it can output an SBUS signal. The XM Plus would also be a good candidate for this, um, and it also is about half the price of this one. Wiring up this relay is very simple. The first thing you need to do is connect the SBUS out signal cable from the FreeSky receiver into the signal input on the Dragon Link transmitter. Next, we connect the power supply for both the devices. Connect the positive and ground for the receiver to the 5 volt BEC. The Dragon Link transmitter accepts 3 or 4S voltage, so that's what I'll be running this relay with. And because of this, I'm connecting it to the ESC pads so it gets the straight through battery voltage. And then the last thing you need to do is solder a connector onto the BAT connectors so you can connect a battery to power this relay. Assembling the relay is also pretty straightforward, especially if you have access to a 3D printer. If you go on Thingiverse and search Dragon Link, you'll find a few relays already on there, like this one. Alternatively, you can use the simple one that I've designed. This holds a Dragon Link V3 Slim transmitter. There is an antenna tube holder for your 2.4 GHz receiver. There is holes for mounting any PDB with the 30.5mm spacing. There is a battery tray, and then also this is designed to mount straight onto a tripod with the adapter plate being separate so you can use your own if you wish. I simply glued these two parts together using E6000. My Dragon Link transmitter module has a bit of Velcro on it for when I'm mounting it directly to the TX, so this print was designed with that in mind. I used a double sided sticky pad to hold the receiver in place and this is basically the relay ready to use. Um, we just need to look at a bit of important config before this thing is ready for action. The final and most important part of this is getting the config right. The first thing we're going to do is connect our Dragon Link transmitter module to a PC and set the input to SBUS. By default it's PPM and that is what the transmitter is sending to your Dragon Link module. Um, but the reason I'm using SBUS is because all of the receivers will do 16 channels over this, whereas if you use PPM, I found that they were only doing 8 channels. Just bear in mind that if you don't want to keep changing these settings depending on whether you're using it relay or transmitter mounted, then you'll need to go into each of your models as shown here and change the external RF mode to SBUS. If you don't see the option for SBUS in this list, it means you need to update to the latest version of OpenTX. So when you're using the relay, you're going to need to make sure you change your model profile so that you're transmitting to the 2.4 GHz receiver using the internal RF module rather than the external module. 
all I do is duplicate my model, put an R on the end for relay, and then I change the settings to the 2.4G receiver. This way you don't need to worry about remembering the settings or having to change them each time you fly. You just choose the right model and away you go. This next step is the most important one. So you already have your failsafe set for your Dragon Link so that if there is a breakdown in communication between your Dragon Link transmitter and your model, your receiver knows what to do and enters failsafe. Now, the important thing is you have to also set a failsafe on your 2.4 GHz receiver, just in case there is a breakdown in communication between your transmitter and your 2.4 GHz receiver. Because when this happens, your Dragon Link transmitter doesn't know about it, and it's still happily receiving a signal and keeps sending that onto the plane. So if it holds the last position, there's a very strong possibility you'll crash if you don't get your control link back quick enough. Okay, so we're on the final step now, and we're gonna test the controls through the relay. Move your sticks, make sure the control surfaces are moving the right way. Try changing your flight modes and check on your OSD that the correct flight mode is being entered and do any other checks you can think of to ensure that it's working properly. Then really importantly, we're gonna test the fail safe before you go ahead and use this. Use at least two scenarios. The first one being with everything on and working, try turning off your radio transmitter and check on the OSD that your plane does go into fail safe or return to home. Next, with everything up and running again, try unplugging the battery from your relay and again make sure that your plane goes into fail safe or return to home. Please make sure you remove any props before doing any of the tests in step five. Now you should be ready to go. Thanks for watching.